Hi, child of God, you are welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from powerful Word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. All the contents that we create on this channel are purely Christian content, and I encourage you, if you're a believer, subscribe to this channel. In 1972, as you know, there were two great generals of the gospel. One of them, Lauren Cunningham, you know him. Youth with a mission. The other one was Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ. Both of them went to bed and they woke up with the same dream. In that dream, they saw seven mountains. And that these mountains, they were told, were the spheres of influence that control and shape culture. Please, you have to listen to this as I wrap up. And from this, they came up with the concept that has come to be known in the body of Christ today as the seven mountain concept. The Bible says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains that is influence it was a prophetic revelation of what would happen before Christ comes that suddenly the church of Christ will gain such dominance and influence and will now begin to rise above all other mountains now mountains in scripture don't just talk of obstacles alone mountains in scripture talk of spheres of influence or mind control systems hallelujah that these are the mountains that shape culture every one of us here every church on the plateau every individual on the plateau and across this nation is under the influence of one or more of these mountains if the purposes of Christ would be preserved it will be through allowing Jesus and his purposes to penetrate through these mountains. One more scripture and then I'll discuss them and then we'll pray. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Please let's read it together if you can see it. Ready? One, two, read. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Please leave that scripture there. Let's read it one more time. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Hallelujah. We're intelligent people. Now let's look very carefully. He told them, Go ye into. He never said, Go around. That means in as much as evangelism is powerful, there was something he was saying. Go ye into. If I say go into a room, what do I mean? To enter and be submerged there. Enter the system. And then he uses all the world. Why did he add all there? How many walls do we have? A logical statement to be go to the world. But he says all the world. It means he was speaking of something else. Go ye into these systems and spheres of influence. And when you get there, become an advocate of the purposes of God. And ensure that every creature, not every man, every creature benefits from your influence. This is the mandate Jesus gave us. More than just going around to talk to people. He says, enter the system. All the world. And when you get there, your assignment is not just to do business. Your assignment is not just to be a professor, respectfully speaking. Your assignment is not just to be a parent. He says, enter the system. Let me list for you the seven mountains. In every society, these spheres of influence are the shapers and the molders of every civilization, the shapers and the molders of the ideologies in any and every society. There are seven of them. Are you ready? 
the first sphere of influence that controls men and their activities on earth is the mountain of religion. Please write it down. The mountain of religion. This is the sphere of influence that shapes the spiritual conviction of people across a territory. Everybody in a territory believes something. Even an atheist who does not believe anything believes himself. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? God must find men and women represented in this mountain. This is where preachers come in. The fivefold apostles and prophets. When people get a wrong ideology, it largely came from the pulpit. Sunday after Sunday in Nigeria, we have services somewhere almost every day. Is that true? There is a conference, a convention, a Bible study, a program, a prayer meeting, a night vigil. Our churches are full of people who submit themselves without restraint to be mentored spiritually. If their spiritual convictions are wrong, it means that something wrong is coming from the pulpit, the mountain of religion. It was because Samuel was properly mentored by Eli. That was why he was able to rise even though Eli, the later part of his life, couldn't, you know, things went wrong. But we must give him the credit that he mentored Samuel. When God spoke to Samuel, he used the voice of Eli. So God will speak to you using the voice of your preacher. The sermons you hear every day. It means we must pray that God will send quality men to our pulpits. Let Satan not train rubbish and send nonsense to mount our pulpits. I say this respectfully speaking. Otherwise there will be trouble in the next 5-10 years. Let me tell you something with Satan. When he finds out that he is unable to capture a generation because of their unbending loyalty. He will let them be and be patient while he prepares for the next generation. This is the tragedy of the West today. In the 60s and the 70s, most of these places you see today that have become a, a place of apology in the West, they were places of fire. These missionaries and evangelists and men and women of God, you read them, God's generals, all of these mighty people, but they made a mistake. And I pray we don't make it. They were concentrating on advancing the kingdom and forgot their future. They left their children behind. That was what Pharaoh told Moses. We will allow you go. Let the men go. But the children will stay behind. Moses said, no way. We are all going. We can't keep our future behind. When Satan cannot fight you, he will give up on you. But you will now come and grow with your future. Let me tell you this. Whoever shapes the mind of the children while they grow is the person they will be loyal to when they grow. You cannot appear into the future and the adulthood of anyone and claim a stake in their destiny. No. No. It is the reason why we must invest and we must commit to training the children and Sunday school is not a weak ministry. That is what gives guarantee to the continuity of Equa Plateau Church. Hallelujah. So when Satan found out that some of those black Americans and those preachers would not give up and would serve Jesus unto death, he gave up on that generation and came back and met their children who were at home, unattended to by the busy parents who were preaching the gospel. And he said, you know what, I will grow with you. Those little children today are the presidents of nations. The person who trained them while they were growing is the one they will be loyal to now that they are grown. Not to sound condemning, but I am amazed at the level of enlightenment of this generation of our children coming up. They will ask you questions that you cannot sleep. As a small child, my teacher said, Many of us are, I'm coming to family. 
But many of us have ignored this. Let me tell you the truth. Don't just think of where you are. You must think of the next 10 years, the next 20 years. Equa Plateau Church, do not ignore the youth and the children. Whether we like it or not, our parents and even us, if Christ tarries, we will all be gone one day. It's not bad news, except if you are not born again. We will be gone. It's the reason why businesses don't last. I don't know any business that is up to 150 years old in Africa. We do not think succession. No. You go to Europe, you will see houses 200 years old. You will see businesses 500 years old, 400 years old. Because they built within it in the system the, a principle for continuity. But many times in our nation and our region, anything that lasts 10 years is old enough to die. religion as I mentioned this this becomes our prayer point even for this conference Lord raise pastors raise missionaries people of integrity and people who love Jesus people who will love Jesus more than money Jesus more than fame Jesus more than ministry Jesus more than titles we should not just wish it we must pray it and trust God to raise people Number two, family. The second sphere of influence that is responsible for shaping the mindsets of people. Family is very important. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that as a man of God, when you are counseling people and they tell you they want to get married, you have to verify whether the person they are marrying is of the opposite sex. Whoever, whoever imagined that that would need to happen in the church. Are you marrying a male or a female? It's terrible. Very terrible. Go and read about the Tower of Babel and Sodom and Gomorrah. What brought them to decadence? Do you know that there are places when you go today even to preach, there are things you cannot say. They will jail you. There are restrooms that they are, right now there are court cases happening simply because they designated the restroom male and female. And people say I should have the liberty to enter anyone depending on what I choose to be at that time. And can I tell you, don't think it's far from Nigeria. You will be surprised to know how many people are embracing these ideologies. There are fundings that never happen to institutions and organizations until they agree and accept that they will not fight any, you know, some kind of things. Every armed robber came from a family. Is that true? Every one of these Boko Haram people was born. Can I tell you, every national problem was first a regional problem that was not attended to. Every regional problem was first a community problem that was neglected. And if you keep reducing it, it will end in a family problem that was ignored. I don't believe in abusing children. I don't believe in all of this, but let me tell you the truth. We have to be careful, respectfully speaking, especially with our idea of love. Because what many parents are calling love is a recipe for disaster and destruction. I will apologize at the end of my message, but just allow me to finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to be careful. When we were growing up, there were certain disciplines, whether in Sunday school or it was in secular school or home. There were now you come and meet a small child and he cannot say good morning. He can even be putting his hand in your pocket and remove everything there and run. Oh, come on, please. Something is really wrong. If that person becomes your president, he will do exactly what he's doing. Hallelujah. Family. The first revelation of Jesus that children should see is as displayed by daddy and mommy. That is the first revelation of Jesus. If all that the boy sees is abuse and irresponsibility, even if he does not like it, that is the only mindset he has. He will become it inevitably. 
Hallelujah. God must help us. And there are people here that God is raising and granting that ministry to help families. Please don't give up. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God lift people who can help correct these mindsets. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, very quickly, our time is gone. I have to end. Government and politics. The third mountain that shapes and controls the mindset of people is the mountain of politics and government. Someone was asking me a question and he said, what is my opinion about the Nigerian politics? I said, next question, please. <laughs> Ask me the next question because I'm not sure that you are ready. I don't, I'm on air. I don't want to, my perspectives, you see, maybe my perspectives, I'm used to being controversial. My perspectives are usually somewhat disturbing. You cannot select who you want and then ask me to choose any one of them. No. That's not liberty. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. God has to help us. One policy set by the devil through the guise of the parliament or government of, and politics can shut the church regardless of our prayer and rolling on the ground. One person. Go and read your Bible in the book of Daniel. When Daniel was praying unto God, it was affecting the spirits of the Medes and the Persians and they had to come through politics to enact. They didn't say we are attacking Daniel. That would be too direct. But they came and, and they, they agreed on a vote and they said for 30 days, I pray that a day will not come when they would have to censor the church and send sermons from maybe a federal registry so you receive yours by text to preach. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. A particular broadcasting station approached me some years ago and they wanted to put my programs there. And when I had a discussion with them, I love them, I don't condemn them, but I was terribly disappointed at the conditions and the things they were putting. I said, if I do this this way, will I be able to go to bed? No. I said, no, I'm grateful. God bless you. But this is not it. We must trust God for grace. There are some of you who are called into politics. It's not just enough to pray. We must obtain grace. But let me tell you, many politicians are not very serious with God. That's the reason why when they get there, because in politics, you have to be in direct fraternity with the realm of the spirit. Either towards God or some kind of diabolic thing. Politics will stop you from being neutral. You know the number of Muslims that come to me for prayers, especially during election. They don't care. They mix anything and they hope one will work. At least they are honest. While they are crying to you, there is some charm somewhere, there is another thing somewhere, they just know one of them will work. And they come, once they hear you have results, you say in Jesus, you will be surprised, they kneel down, they watch TV, they are not stupid people. Can I tell you this? We don't have the time, I'm sorry for stretching you. But if you ever want to get into politics, you must be able to find a system where priesthood backs you. The formation of king, priest, prophet is a tripartite formation that must never be compromised if you want to do well in government. The reason is that politicians just believe I am a Christian. No, it takes more than being a Christian. There has to be priesthood backing you. Unbelievers know this. Forget the things that you see on TV. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. You will be surprised at the sacrifices. That is why they have confidence regardless your opinion. Their confidence is outsourced from a realm that is not earthly. May God grant us grace to have politicians like Daniel who will be uncompromising and yet will make impact, maximum impact. 
may God raise even within the plateau in this year and the years that come people across the various tiers of government it's painful and it's unfortunate and I say this respectfully so to know that our students have been kept this long at home I know you are sad it's unfortunate there are contemporaries respectfully speaking in private universities and abroad have long gone and you will say life should be equal it, it won't be it, it won't balance like that it will take favor and the grace of God by the time the gentleman is graduating he has passed the age for employment number four education I think I've said that already let's just pray that God will raise people Imagine a professor who is born again, spirit filled with understanding. You can look at a student and know that this student is not just failing because he is dull. There is something more and you can lock your office and say, gentlemen, I know that I teach you in class. I'm a professor, but I'm a witness too. Let us pray. And that one prayer right there, the day that student is returning with his certificate. It is true. We must trust God not just for intellectuals but people who will use the tool of intellect. I don't know if they've changed it but many years ago, respectfully speaking, the motto of the Corpus, Islamic Corpus, their association was serving Islam through the nation. Not serving the nation. No, the nation is a tool. That is the mindset that is given to them. We must trust God and then education it shapes our minds I am praying in the name of Jesus that God will raise quality teachers and quality schools if God is granting you a grace to build a school please build it don't be afraid build it with confidence we need standards there are people today respectfully speaking who would graduate and you would tell them write a letter and they are writing it like a text message you like you I am and you are wondering and this person graduated with something that is you understand what I'm saying 300 and something in jam and they cannot compose themselves to answer an intelligent question corruption has just eaten into the educational sector we have to trust God for grace may God raise institutions through us yeah. next is media media the word media means a channel, a vista. They will interpret good or evil. We understand good or evil from the lens of media. Did you know that as big and as large as Russia is, they have only one media house? Russia is about a little, uh, a little over half of Africa. And they have only one media house because of the power of media. Media can make you believe anything. An enemy can be a saint through media. A saint can be an enemy through media. Media is a powerful perception control system. Hallelujah. We must trust God for grace. To be able to raise and thank God also for social media. Even though it has its own negative effects. It's produced untold distractions. But if and when it is used properly, you can project Jesus in a way that will surprise you. Who would have known that I'll be standing from one point and you are speaking and everyone, not just seated on a TV, someone with his phone, with a device, anywhere across the globe. That is a powerful tool for evangelism and soul winning. Media is powerful. Let us not allow that space for Satan alone. We must occupy that space. God grants you grace to set up a media house, a TV station. Go for it in the name of Jesus. Provided you will do it with integrity. I am praying. Do you know? Let me tell you this. I had a vision many years ago. Before probably the first or second Christian media house came to this nation. And I saw 37 media Christian media stations 
I said, when will this be? And looking at it today, I am amazed to see what God has done. Hallelujah. Number six, art and entertainment. That is the sixth mountain of influence. Art and entertainment. I don't want to talk much here. They control our dressing. They control our speech. They control how we understand and celebrate success. We have to trust God for people to rise to this mountain. This is the mountain that influences young people the most. This is the mountain where celebrities are found. This is the mountain where musicians are found. This is the mountain where sportsmen are found. It's amazing how that someone who has been well cultured for many years in one moment can sit under the influence of one or more of these people and destroy their values completely. We need to trust God to have people in the arts and entertainment that can represent the purposes of God. And then finally, the seventh mountain is the mountain of business and finance. This is the mountain that funds every other mountain. Whoever controls the economic flow controls the loyalty of people within a territory. Have you wondered why there is massive kidnapping going on in this nation? And every time those who are the kidnappers are caught, they will tell you they've never enjoyed even 100,000 from that money. So where did the 10 million go to? Where did the 100 million go to? Because there is a central remittance system. You see that now. They understand the power of economy. This service is happening right here. But I am sure the elders will tell you there was a budget for this conference. We have to trust God for people who are genuinely born again. Who love Jesus with all their hearts. And will be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. For the sake of his majesty. I made up my mind as a man of God. That I would never teach and raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. I understand the power of economic influence. And I made a commitment that I would teach them the whole counsel of God. To the end that people be empowered. Empowerment is powerful. Hallelujah. I had the honor and the privilege of praying during the thanksgiving of one of the governors when he became a governor. I wasn't supposed to pray for him. I was in a meeting and then I was told he would be coming afterwards and they requested, they said, can I pray for him? I said, fine, that's, that's okay. I saw people in that church that, except for the love of Jesus, I should be saying, what are you doing here? Do you know why they came? Because a man of economic means was to be prayed for. There are many people you don't need to invite to church. Just be blessed. They will come. It is true. If you want to speak to people who are seated on that mountain, it will take economic empowerment to be able to communicate the gospel. That is the truth. Because you see, respectfully speaking, wealth comes with pride. So if you are communicating the gospel, you have to sustain some level of economic empowerment for wealthy people to listen to you. Seven mountains. What you call your purpose or your assignment is simply the role that you have to play in one or more of these. You are a witness, but what you call your assignment is simply, this is what I'm leaving with you tonight as we pray. God is counting on you. For some, the mountain of religion, like the preachers. For some, family, education, government, art, entertainment, now, do you know why I'm saying this? Because there are several people who sense the call of God upon their life. But they think the only way to express the call of God is to be a man of God. It's a narrative that has been sold. And there are many people who are holding the mic today who should not be in fivefold meaning. They were only craving for an expression. And since they were told the only way to do ministry is to become a man of God, we have people who clearly you will know that this is not their assignment. But if everyone is now told 
that you can find expression right where you are. This is very powerful. We are going to pray. This is kingdom advance. Let me define it now and then we pray. What then is kingdom advance? Kingdom advancement refers to any and every scriptural means kingdom advance refers to any and every scriptural means deployed any and every scriptural means deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities kingdom advancement refers to every and any scriptural means deployed to advance Jesus Christ and his purposes to enthrone Jesus Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities so the next time you say we are advancing the kingdom what it means is we will employ every and any scriptural means that can be deployed provided it will end up enthroning Jesus Christ in the hearts of men evangelism and across every strata influence that is kingdom advance so whether it is through your offering through your singing through your preaching anything at all that is scriptural and can lead to the enthroning of Jesus Christ is kingdom advance this is our mandate the church is only as good as its ability to save sinners and to turn those people to become kingdom ambassadors witnesses indeed I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift that is the song of a witness whatever you want to start Lord you can start through me whatever you want to end Lord you can end through me for I'm yours I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours listen can I tell you the ones who will enjoy longevity the ones who will enjoy the divine backing of heaven are not just those who say I am a Christian but those who are actively involved in this kingdom come project. 
There are people who the devil will not come and oppress anyhow. The jealousy of God has been invested over them by reason of the role that they play in the kingdom. It is these people that the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong, that he even reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You can be so involved in the program of God that he will invest his jealousy and his dedicated attention upon you. Can I tell you God loves everybody but he does not trust everybody. It is clear from scripture. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around